There is nothing more unattractive than being lost in a major city like London. We've all done it. We've done that Google spin, which alerts all the local pickpockets that you don't know where you are going. But fear not, I will teach you the best tips and tricks to navigate a complex city like London. Let's get started. First things first, what are you rooting for? Obviously, London is a massive place. So to come out with the idea of, you know what, I'm gonna navigate and learn all of it is of course a massive undertaking. What I would then do is optimize it upon what you are trying to root for. So if you're doing like a stag do, then you know, you've just got to know the relationship from one pub to another pub. So by breaking it down to a much smaller objective, it's a much easier way to plan and it's a much easier navigation exercise. Don't bother trying to learn all the stuff you're never ever going to know. Just optimise for what you want to go and see and do, whether that's in London or any other city for that matter. How else can you be super professional with your navigational needs? Well, cheap. Scout the route beforehand. It's exactly what professional tour guides do. They ensure that all their pavements and any spaces they need access to, they've already gone there ahead of time to ensure they can put their people there to see the point that they might be wanting to point out. Us cab drivers do it. Before we do a route, we'll have a word of other cab drivers, check on the Twitter groups and things, see if there's any closures that might affect our route planning. So with that in mind, plan it to whoever you're coming into town with or wherever you're going. You know, if it's gonna be a hot day, you might wanna factor in some shade. Maybe you've got an elderly relative, so you might have to factor in the fact that you might need to jump onto a bus or some kind of public transport. Just scout the route, um, rehearse it in advance, and of course that minimizes any risks you're gonna have of getting lost along the way. Now, ultimate preparation, whenever I'm out filming or driving in the cab, is always having a Y food with me. It's Friday afternoon in the city of London. You'll generally know that most of the city of London shuts early in the afternoon, and on a Friday, it might not even be open at all. So it doesn't leave me much in the way of options. But fear not, preparation in terms of the complete meal replacement shake Y food ensures that I'm always covered. This one is the gorgeous hazelnut flavor, but I've been drinking coconut as well recently, and I'm thinking, is coconut a nut? I mean, hazelnut is, but coconut, is it a nut, a fruit, or a berry? Let me know what you think down below. Or even better, if you use my link, that will get you 10% off of Y Foods' entire offering site-wide. Buy some of the coconut flavor, and let me know what you think. You can also access that discount using the code taxi-youtube. You know, maybe give hazelnut and coconut a go. Excuse the pun, but go nuts with that discount code. Whatever it is, it tastes pretty damn good. Set your boundaries. City of London works really well. We're here on London Wall, which of course roughly defines the geographical boundaries of the City of London. The City of London, of course, is just a square mile. So in terms of a place to try and explore and get lost within, it's a real nice restriction to work with. If you start off in the very middle of London and work yourself outwards, you're just gonna be setting yourself up for failure because it's potentially unlimited. But if you work from the outside of a boundary and work your way in, you're gonna have much better progress in doing that. City of London, of course, you can start from the eastern part of the Roman London Wall up near Tower Hill. You can start on this northern boundary here um, or down at the south on the River Thames. You can't walk any further because you will eventually end up in the River Thames. The other cool thing with boundaries is that depending on what area of London you're in, there's gonna be some unique identifiers to help you work out what area of London you are in. Like, there are no roads in the city of London. Every street sign you will see, other than Goswell Road, will be a street, a lane, a passage, a court, Cheapside, uh, East Cheap, all those kind of things. There is not a single road other than Goswell Road, just north of here, start of the A1. You know, there's other identifiers as well. So the bollards here in the city of London are gonna be the red and white, the St George's flag, also a key signifier that you're in the city of London. But if you go over the city of Westminster, all the lampposts will turn black and gold. You will notice the traditional white signs that you can imagine Abbey Road written on, as you'd see in a sort of touristy gift shop. And it gets as deep as you want. I've just walked past Postman's Park, and this was actually one of the central delivery offices for the Royal Mail here in the city of London. So you can tie all these things together, look for the clues everywhere. So one way I like to think about navigation in London is terra incognita. It's the idea of having like a blank map that you gradually fill in as you go to more areas. Video games start with this principle, right? And you have to venture into the unknown. That's literally what terra incognita means. It means land unknown. 
And by doing that, you then move into a zone that was once unknown into something that you do know. Perfect example of it for me is here in Hoban. Now, I used to work down there, uh, just Fetter Lane, just around the back of Sainsbury's HQ there. But for me, coming up Hoban into High Hoban was like falling off the end of the earth. I'd never ventured down there, and in my mind, I couldn't see what was beyond that point of Hoban Station. Obviously, now it leads into the West End. It's the start of St Giles High Street and into Oxford Street. But at that time, it was a complete blank space for me. And that's really kind of all navigation is. It's the relationship from one area to another. With the exception of some routes, roads, streets in London, pretty much everything runs on a north, east, south or west. The obvious anomaly is things like Waterloo Bridge, which I'm standing on now. You look at that on a map, that's like a, a bang on diagonal. But rather than worrying about these odd bearings in this way, you can still look at it as going from the north of the river down to the south of the river. Well, I've heard some cab drivers referring to Westminster Bridge as north to south, but if you look at it on a map, uh, it's anything but north to south. You can do this with just about every street in London. Fleet Street, well, that's horizontal. Tottenham Court Road, vertical. Strand, horizontal. Victoria Street, horizontal. When you think of the streets in that way, it's a lot easier to navigate. You're not trying to think of it in terms of like angles. You know, if you've looked at say, the Old Witch, there's very much a circular pattern to it, right? But then you've then got to divide that circle up into say hours, it gets confusing. So effectively, if you square the circle, if you're then laying London out as a kind of a grid, it makes navigation so much easier. You know, you've only got to look at the London Underground as a good example for this. Take the Victoria Line, right? Victoria Line will either be expressed as northbound or southbound. But if you look at certain stops, say between Euston and King's Cross, well, on a map, that's very clearly west to east. But you'll call that northbound on the Victoria Line. And all that is just simplicity of the people who are going to be using the tube, because the majority of the line is from south to north. There is obviously, of course, some exceptions. And the same way there's exceptions to streets in London. But if you can narrow it down to west to east, north to south, makes it a lot easier. Another great way to not get lost is to use a familiar map. Now, you'll sometimes see these ones dotted around London. And these are great on street level. Uh, you might also work from the tube map. That's one great way of seeing London. Uh, I personally like cabbies, mate, because that's the way that I learned London. It's that top-down view, which a lot of people, when they navigate sort of foreign cities, prefer that top-down view, that, that bird's-eye view. But whether it's Google Maps, Waze, you're always best using something that you are more comfortable with. A map is just a representation of the information. So those ones on the street are great because they're designed for someone who is walking on the street. Tube map, a little bit better for understanding the relationship of tube stations to one another. Not very good for understanding the distance between tube stations. So use whatever map works for you. Otherwise, you're gonna be doing that dreaded. It's also worth noting that there is absolutely zero shame in getting lost in your progression to mastery in terms of navigation. Because if you didn't meander off the path and go in slightly different directions, how else would you find amazing things such as the Guildhall Yard or the Guildhall Art Gallery. Getting lost is part of the progression of finding your way. It's a bit like learning any new skill. If you wanted to learn, say, guitar, there's an element of sucking before you actually you know, get to the point of some level of mastery. Part of the skill of navigation is that when you get lost, is having to find your way again. That's how you kind of you know, stimulate the neurons and actually hardwire that navigation in your brain. Because if you know where you're going, you're not lost. And if you never find your way back to where you're supposed to be going, then how do you ever know which direction you are going? So by virtue, you have to get lost to eventually find your way. On the way of getting lost, be sure to look out for landmarks. This one is the oldest trick in the book. Obviously, whenever you pull up anywhere or wherever you start, just remember what you are nearby. I used to do this on the knowledge all the time. In the fact that, say, Kentish Town Road, as you're going up there, I always remember that the left into Holmes Road was by the McDonald's. But you can do this all across London. You could use BT Tower, London Eye, The Shard. These are all in quite distinct parts of town. So if you can remember where those landmarks are, you've got a pretty good visual reference of how to get back there. But you don't have to be super optimised. So this is Watling Street, one of the original Roman London roads out of London. Of course, Roman roads are straight. The shortest distance between A to B is, of course, a straight line. But you don't need to be that optimal with your directions. It all comes back to 
what are you actually optimizing for? For instance, if I'm traveling around on the tube, then often what I'll do is I'll do the least amount of changes possible, i.e. how long can I sit on this single tube carriage for because I wanted to optimize for comfort. Similarly, if I'm on my push bike, I'm not gonna be taking the most direct routes because I've already got an advantage by being on my bike. So I'm gonna be taking the more beautiful or the more scenic routes along the way. Very rarely do you need to get the most optimum route unless you are a professional navigator. So of course, unless you're a London cab driver, your navigation needs not to be perfect. Wanna see what that looks like? Well, I'll leave that in this video over here.